her dad. Her dad hates you. He hates you because he knows exactly what you're after. He was the same man himself 19 years before. He knows what you're... He takes one look and thinks, hell, fire. <laughs> I'm not leaving these two alone tonight. I've not finished paying for that Arthrug yet. No chance. <laughs> and look at him. Look at the state of him. Looks like he's got a box of frogs down the front of his trousers. Look at him. <laughs> And you say, Hello, Mr. Thompson. Hello, Mr. Thompson. Very nice to meet you. And um, just brought Susan home from the pictures that. And you sit down on the settee. And let me draw the picture for you if I can. Sort of, I don't know, corpy house or a little semi, say. And they've got a settee, chair, uh, dog and cat asleep on the hearth rug, cream tiled 1953 style fireplace, brass ornaments all over the top of it, brass sort of crocodiles you can crack nuts with, brass windmills, <laughs> brass boots full of spills, brass cartridges with all the bills in them. And then over the fireplace, there's a green Korean lady from Boots. You know. <laughs> a brass plaque with what, what is a mother on it stuck on the wall, all the business. And you sit down on the settee. Now, the springs are bust on the settee, so the minute you sit down, your knees are higher than your head. They're up there like that. <laughs> You're like a praying mantis in a teddy boy suit, right? <laughs> but there's only that place to sit because that is the only seat left in the house. The only other one is his chair. And nobody's allowed to sit on his chair. You can tell it's his chair because it's near the fire, facing the television. It's got brill cream marks all over the back and fag burns down the arm. His <laughs> chair. So you sat there. Dog and cat, dad in his chair, Fire roaring up the chimney back, cold February night, right? Mother on this side, daughter on this side, and there then follows an evening of the most miserable, utterly embarrassing silences that you've ever experienced in your whole life. You sat there and you think, I'm gonna have to talk, say something. Um, it's not been a bad day today, Mr. Thompson, has it? Eh, you know what I mean? It's not been bad, considering. I mean, it didn't start snowing till half past one this afternoon, did it? You know what I mean? <laughs> and that thunder and lightning have finished by 12, hadn't it? You know, so... It's not been bad, really, you know what I mean? <sighs> um, die, we saw, uh, we saw um, a great picture tonight, didn't we? Well, great picture, wasn't it, Susan? Eh? Fabulous picture it was. Great picture. Oh, I. Yeah, it was brilliant. It really was brilliant, wasn't it, Susan? Brilliant. What was it called? Uh, the King of the uh, Khyber Rifles. What was it about? You don't know, you were facing the other way all night, you know. <laughs> Uh, it was about a king and he had some rifles and these kybers were going to get them off him. And, uh... <laughs> and the mam says, right, I'll just make us all some supper then before we go to bed. She goes in the kitchen and comes out a quarter of an hour later with some tea and some cake. Now, I want to ask a question now. Where do these women, these mothers, get this cake from? Where does it come from? <laughs> they must have a secret recipe unbeknownst to anybody else because it's like moon rock, you can't eat it. <laughs> You take one bite, it starts to grow inside your head, it's going... <laughs> and it sticks everywhere, it's up the back of your nose, back of your tongue, inside your... And it won't go away, you're chewing it and chewing it and chewing it. My nice cake is so very nice. Then she brings the tea in, and I swear to the Lord that they do this on purpose. I swear they get the cup and saucer and get a blow lamp on it first so it's red hot. <laughs> and they fill it with red hot tea and red hot milk and they bring it in. She's got a welder's mitt, she gives it in, you go... Oh, 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 oh. And yet the only place you can do is balance it on your lap and you're trying to look relaxed while you're choking to death on this cake with half a pint of scalding hot liquid, a hair's breadth from your wedding tackle. You're suddenly going... <laughs> <laughs> and you think, right, I'll have a drink of tea. I'll have to have a drink of tea. That'll shift it. That'll wash it down. Fatal mistake. Because that tea, as soon as it hits that cake, accelerates the growth rate. It doesn't shift it. It's that... And at that very moment, her dad decides to talk to you. Where are you from, you? <laughs> Ooh, me! <coughs> well, I know where my wife and daughter are from. They live here with me, you pillock. <laughs> oh, oh, yes, yes, um... I was just, uh, <clears throat> I must have been a, a bone in my tea. Um, 
It's very nice cake, that Mrs. Thompson. Can I have the recipe for my mum? I'll give it to my mum. She poisoned them rats with it. It's great stuff. <laughs> cake. Uh, me, I'm, I'm from Crumsall, uh, Miss Crumsall. Isn't that where they eat the young, Crumsall? <laughs> Better the dead stood up in bus queues with their hands out. No, oh, it's not that bad, it's Crumsall, it's all right, it's not that bad. All right. What time's your bus back home, then? Um, oh, I've missed it. You have to walk, then, won't you? Yes, I will. You got work in the morning? Yes, I have. You best be gone, then, aren't you? Well, I'll go in a minute. I'll, I'll just finish my tea and my cake, you know what I mean? It's, it's lovely. It really is lovely cake, this, Mr. Thompson. It's very nice. Thank you. I, you know, I'll not keep anybody up, like, you know. <sighs> and then it goes quiet and quiet. And you say, that's a good painting, that, Mr. Thompson, you know? You can always tell a good painting like that and that Van Gogh chair, you know, that chair he did. You can always tell a good painting because the eyes follow you around the room wherever you go. You know what I mean? Chair hasn't got any eyes, has it? <laughs> no, but if it did have, they'd follow you around the room, you know what I mean? It's, oh, God. <laughs> well, that's a great fireplace, that. That's a great fireplace, that, Mr. Thompson. You can't... The craftsman made them. I bet all them joints and cracks are exactly the same size, you know what I mean? <sighs> that coal's burning well. For coal, you know what I mean? <laughs> what did you say? I said, for coal. <laughs> I thought you said something. I did, I said, for coal. <laughs> All right, I just asked. I'm sure you said something. And he goes, <laughs> And he goes, quieter and quieter and quieter, and you can feel all these mad giggles building up inside you. You're going to go off in a minute. And then the dog goes into its party trick. The dog's on the hearth rug, and he gets his <laughs> back leg, and it bends it right up behind its neck and bends itself double, and in, in a position it takes an Indian mystic a lifetime to achieve. It, it very carefully and tenderly starts to lick its town halls. You know. <laughs> and there's nowhere else to look. You... It's centre stage with a spotlight on, you can't look. You go... Oh. You think I'm gonna have to say something, I'll go potty here. Uh, it's a clever dog, that Mr. Thompson. <laughs> I, it's been able to do that since it were a pup, you know. <laughs> no, I wasn't being funny or anything like that. <laughs> I mean, you know, it must be supple, you know what I mean? It must be fit, them dogs, you know, have good back muscles. I mean, you know, it's nearly bent. Double that dog, you know what I mean? I mean, you know, I mean, I wish I could do that. <laughs> He said, well, give it a bit of cake, it might let you. <laughs> and you can feel yourself getting hotter and hotter and more and more embarrassed. And then the dog goes into the finale of the show. It rolls on its back, for it, wiggles its paws in the air, turns over on its little tummy, puts its little head on its little paws, and drops a cracker. <laughs> and the trouble with dogs is they don't make any noise, do they? Have you noticed? <laughs> they... <laughs> they don't, do they? They just sort of go, foot. <laughs> and the... the only way you know anything's happened is that everybody's eyes start to water at the same time. <laughs> And it's the only thing that gets her dad moving. Well, I'm for my bed now, I'm... <laughs> and he staggers off. Staggers off into the kitchen, banging his head on the wall, you know. <laughs> Comes out with his eyes through, he says... Well, the alarm clock and the hot water bottle, like... Hot water bottle under here. Now, the alarm clock, the winding of the alarm clock is a ritual as old as time. The winding of the alarm clock is supposed to signify that you are supposed to go. It must date back. Right into prehistory, that. I bet the Romans came in with sundials under their arms and the daughters had boyfriends and going, oh, you have someone bed um some est. 